<clears throat> right, so if you remember what we said yesterday, where we're talking about the when Mashiach comes, that we will not need policemen, but we will need advisors. Because every because everyone will want to do what God wants, but and and the judges will tell them what God wants, will tell them what God wants. But nevertheless, that comes from above to below. It's sort of like imposing us, imposing God's will on us. And what we want is to be inspired. That it has to come from us, and that's the whole name of the game. That it, we have to be inspired. It has to come from us, our own free will with happiness, with love, in order for us, in order to that hap- for that to happen, we have to personalize our connection with God. And that's done by, by means of the advisors. That's what the, the advisors said. Now, according to this, you and Tom, we can understand that after the Mashiach comes, lo yitzterachu, we will not need show dream policemen. Caven sins, as then you shoftayach v'yotzayach. There will be, and that's what we pray for every day, three times a day in our in our prayers in the Shmon Esrei. We pray for God, please give us judges and advisors. Then in the days of the Mashiach, there'll be not policemen but advisors, b'shlemus in a complete way. Hein amishpatim v'horaos. Whether we're talking about the laws and the <clears throat> commands of the Torah, Haboim, which come by means of the Shoftayich, by means of the judges, the Yachad, together with Netinat Koach, with a, how do you say, inspiration and an empowering Nali which is implied in this Behain, and whether Eitzos Tovos, or the good advice Haboz, which comes by means of the Yotzayach, by means of your, uh, not just your judges, but also your advisors. And maybe in Zo, that they bring this Bepinimius into the inside of a person, into your personality, that a person wants to do what the judge says. Not just that he does it because the judge wants it, and I put my will aside, but that I want it also. That's what the advisors will say. Only by means of this, Nasa Yehudi, a Jew will be Chadur, he will be permeated Lagamri with Torah and the commandments and godliness. He won't have to have policemen in order to do what God says. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, it shouldn't be a to do what God says, Ayyadeh Shoftayach Bilavad, by means of the judges alone. Horas Torah She Yehudi Makabal, that a Jew, <clears throat> the judges, they tell you what to do, but Kabbalah all, like accepting the yoke, but there are because whatever God says to do, I'll do. Why do you do it? Because God says. You enjoy doing it? I enjoy doing what God says. I'm not uh, this. <clears throat> right? I mean, do you see anything in it? No, I don't, I don't, I don't really get it, get the point of it. You know why I'm putting on these tefillin and things like that, but but you have any idea what God is? No, I just know that it's not me, and I just you know do it. Okay, that's one way of doing Torah and the commandments. And then you just realize that I'm not right, and that God is, and I just do what God wants. That's that's okay, that's all right. But that's not really 100% really what God wants. God wants you to do from love, from warmth, from joy. So a person would say, listen, you can command me to do, you can command me to say, but you can't command me to feel. If I don't feel it, I don't feel it. What do you want? That's that's between me and God. That's something inside. You won't see how I feel. There's people, play actors, it's a, it's a, a, you know, a multi-trillion dollar industry, acting, right? The people, the good actors, you can't tell that they're acting. It really looks like they are genuinely feeling love and fear and courage and whatever all these emotional human feelings they train their faces and their bodies and their actions and the words so that they act as though it's happening well you can do that in judaism also you can act as though how do they say 
fake it till you make it. it okay, that's that's all right. That's all right. But the fact is, is that it's better than 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 uh, you know not doing at all what God wants. So for sure, for sure. It's better to do the right thing for the wrong th reasons than do the wrong thing, right, for the right reasons. He steals, he, yeah, he's, 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 he steals, why? Because he needs the money for, he wants to buy a new car, he wants to buy a new this. So he's stealing, he's doing things. You should trust God. He's doing the wrong things, but he's got reasons. It's better to do the right things for the wrong things. He feeds his family because if, if I don't feed my family, I'm going to go to jail. You're supposed to feed your family because you love them. Listen, I don't love my family. You want me also to starve them? No, okay, just keep going, doing what you're doing. Okay, good, so he's feeding his family, he's taking care of them, but it's only half of the picture. It's like a body without a soul. So it says that the, the judges, that's sort of like a body without a soul. You're doing what God wants because he wants it. That's all, don't ask any questions. But chesar avoda, but there's missing avoda panemis. There's missing what's called a human aspect. You're, there's nothing happy. There's nothing flowing. Nothing is natural. That should permeate your understanding and your feelings. And this comes by means of the advisors. Right? Most people, what do they get turned on by? Money. Now, money that arouses the essence, soul of people. Right? Someone scratched my car Wow, that's it. You know, you go outside and you find out, no, it's not your car. It was somebody else's car. Ah, that's different. In fact, you know what? I'm going to give you a new car. What? A new? Oh, I love you. Right? You, you hurt my money. I hate you. You'll give me, give me my money. Oh, I love you. That's the way people are. It affects their essence. Affects their essence. What are you supposed to do about it? What are you supposed to do about it? What do you mean? Want more money? That's all. Then I'll be happy. He says, yeah, but that's not really you. Good to have money is a good thing, right? And losing money is not a good thing, for sure. But that shouldn't be your essence. Your essence should be the creator. He's creating you. Do you really feel it in an inside way? No, but okay, I'll take your word for it. Okay, then do the commandments. I'll do the commandments. But where is the human being? The human being has been lost. You've become sort of like, a, what do you say, artificial intelligence. Right? Is it? So automatically, and there still remains, in the scene of there's a possibility to do the opposite. Therefore, you have to have judges and advisors. What if you had just have advisors? If you only have advisors, to give you good advice on how to serve God. But there's missing the power of the Torah and something which is totally above you. If all we have is advisors, then you start to think, well, you know, I mean, the main thing is really me. If I'm convinced, right, then I'll do it. If I'm not convinced, then I won't do it. If there's a power from above, then, oh, that's good. Then, then I, it's something that, that, that I don't understand, but it's forcing me to do something that's absolutely true, whether I understand it or not. So you have to have both. Kolomer, you have to have the revelation of godliness, which comes from the judge. Right, The judge, we're talking about a, a, a rabbi who represents the Torah. You have to have both of them together. You have to have a judge that he declares what you must do. And the advisor that he says explains how this is to your benefit and also gives you advice how to do it and find that commandment in your soul, how it can resonate in your personality, putting on tefillin, putting on tzitzis, nifal shah adam atzmo, so comes out to the person himself in a way of uh, that it becomes inside of his in personality, it should be inside. That's the job of the advisors. <clears throat> so therefore, now it will come out that in the times of the Mashiach, that the whole entire world will act according to the Torah, 
but not only in a way of robots doing what is right because it's right and don't ask any questions. Maybe you can ask a question on how to do it a little bit better, but it's not you doing it. Right? It's not doing it. You have to put your real you aside because your, your you is bad. You put that aside and you do the Torah. That's like from the view of the judges. But from the view of the advisors, the real you is good. And that you have that you love, you have the power of love and the power of joy and the power of excitement. Those things are essentially good. And the advisor brings them out. The judge is interested that you do what he says. And the advisor is interested that you should do what you want and that you should want the right thing. But you have to want it. It has to come from you. There's no possibility that a person will have to be forced by means of the judge, by means of the policeman, to do what the judges say. <clears throat> so th this is all based on the idea that God really does exist and that God really is creating us and that the Torah is infinitely true and that's the will of the creator. There's only one creator. And that is the will of the creator. And there is no other will of the creator. That's it. God revealed it at Mount Sinai. And that's it. And it's not just a one-time thing that it was revealed 3,000 years ago. And you have to break your head to get to it. It's being revealed. every. That's the essence of life. The essence of the world. If you want to call it that, you can say, I mean, it's, it's comparable to, or maybe that's what it is, the conscience. Your human conscience. Your human conscience was not something that was invented like when God created Cro-Magnon man or whatever is 50 trillion years ago or something like that, or he created the first man according to Judaism three 5,700 whatever years ago. It's not conscious, which is back then, and we just tap into it. Conscience is the essence of a human being and it attaches him to some a reality which is above one's own self. A truth, absolute truth, which a man cannot access access on his own only through his conscience so conscience that attaches you to something that's eternal judaism comes along and says where does this eternal right and wrong come from it comes from the torah so your conscience can attach you to the good and the bad in the torah that's why it says that the no that the non-jews the Gentiles in the world are supposed to do what's called the seven Noahic commandments. That that is the source of all conscience of good and bad, but it has to be because it's commanded in the Torah. Because the Torah makes it official. If not, it can be easily sort of diverted and twisted and, and confused. <clears throat> so that's the whole idea. There is absolute truth. There is absolute good. There is absolute love. And we can connect it to absolute truth and absolute good. That's what the judges do. But absolute love, that's what the advisors do. Love is something that comes from inside of us. That's the advisors. That's what's going to be in the days of the Mashiach. So in other words, in the days of the Mashiach, simply all potential for good will be revealed. But in order to do that, we have to use our free will. We have to be more and more and more and more human. And that depends on every single second being different and every single second having its demands and us making the, the trying to make the right choices every all, constantly. It's always constant. It's always changing, right? But good and bad never change. But how we react to them, that's what the advisors are there for. The, the, the basics should be loving God Loving your fellow man, loving the Torah, the high timer for this reason, Gufa, Therefore, there has to be advisors, not like in the beginning, but in the start. We said the start means you start something up. It's immediate, right now. Beginning is a long time before. We have to have the advisors that start us up. In order to bring a Shomea Eitzah, the person that hears the advice. From the advisor, La Havana Vargasha, to understand and inner feeling. In other words, that we feel, we make the decision ourselves. This is good. This is a, this is worth even giving my life for. Right? You feel inspired. 
in order that this should, our understanding, which comes from the judge, should come to understand, should come also to feeling an inner feeling and also an inner understanding in the Torah, Mitzvahs, and Judaism, but often in a way that this becomes techila, it becomes the beginning, the start, vashar, and opening up the gate. Below Nishar, it doesn't remain just like a new thing, which is incomparable to him. Right? This is what Judaism says. This is what I'm going to do. Where's the humanness? Forget it. I'm just doing what's right. Leave me alone. In order that it shouldn't be just like that, moving so it's, this has to be, it has to be by means of the avodat the Yehudi, the service of the Jew, od kodem geula, we have to prepare for the redemption, the future redemption. When is the future redemption going to come? Well, it, you know, it's not here right now. So it has to be that it's going to be in another minute, another second, another, but it's not here. We have to prepare for it. Avodah lefi erchon, everyone has to serve God according to his, her ability. Tzad achar tzad, step after step, Darga or Darga, level after level, because we're talking about reality here. Because in order, lehechi and to prepare a person, lasoto and to make him kli muxhar, a proper vessel, lekabel at the giluim to reveal the revelations of the days of the Mashiach, including ashiva shoptaya chirishona, the biggest revelations, which will be that God will return back your judges like they were in the beginning, and your advisors like they were at the start. They actually start you up. And notice of this, in addition to this, according to what's known, that the ultimate completion of the days of the Mashiach, it all depends on, this is says in the, in the Tanya, in what chapter 37? It all depends on our service of God all the time of the exile. The, the arrival of Mashiach is not going to be something that God is going to do alone. It depends on our serving God. And we are serving God. That's the idea of Hasidut. Hasidut is to inspire us to get ready for and to prepare, prepare the vessel for the big revelation, which is called Mashiach, which Mashiach is going to bring. Excuse me one moment. Yeah, chapter 37. That's right. Key because a gorem schar mitzvah here mitzvah atzmo. What causes the reward for the commandment? The reward for the commandment is the Mashiach. Is what the, what causes this reward? Right, the the commandments cause the reward. It says ki as gorem schar mitzvah he a mitzvah baatzmo. What's going to cause? The reward of the commandment is the commandment itself. <clears throat> Again, what, what, what's, what's Mashiach going to do? Mashiach is going to make, bring all the Jews to do the commandments. We'll realize how holy the commandments are. What happens when we do a commandment? That's the biggest reward we can have. So it says the reward for the commandment is just what we're doing right now. That's the reward. Call them shachos. Everything that comes from above comes in a way that often the mida connected mida. Of what is say measure for measure. That's the way God made the world. If we go out of ourselves, God will go out of Himself. Especially this is true with charity. You give a little more charity than you want, Hashem gives you blessing. Shabbat so shall call Yehudi. The service of every Jew has to be in a way that He draws down by means of the service, and by means of this, He becomes a vessel for God's blessing. So it's moving. The need and the, we, talk, we talked about this so many times, right? The, the, the per person who buys the, the lottery ticket and he wins $50 million or $50 billion, whatever it is. And the next day, he like spends it all on vodka or something like that. And he dies and drinks one bottle, a half, one bottle and a half or something. And he, he dies from an overdose. And what about all the other, you know, $50 million that he's got? Okay, he can't do it. He didn't have vessels for it. But if a person prepares himself all the time, he thinks of himself, listen, I'm going to win this lottery. What am I going to do if I get $50 million? What am I going to do? Right? What am I going to do if I get it? Yeah, I'll think about something else. Okay, so you think about something else, you're not going to be prepared. Think about what am I going to do? I get $50 million, what am I going to do? I don't know. 
So go and ask somebody. Right? Look it up on Google. Do something. What to do if I win $15 million? There's free advice. You can go to the, the lawyer, get a free advice. You go to the bank, ask the bank, right? Ask, what, would you, what should you do? You have 15 million. You make preparations. I'm going to give X amount to charity. Maybe I'm going to give X amount to, to, to the orphans and widows. And maybe I'm going to give to education. And maybe I'm going to build myself a, a nicer house. And I'll build a, a, a place. For, he's, he thinks it out. Maybe I'll invest some of the money. Maybe I'll invest it in bonds. Maybe in stocks. Maybe in shares. Maybe in whatever the commodities. Maybe I'll, right? He thinks, it makes a plan. He, he gets himself ready to win. Once again, I can't be dressed like this. I have to at least clean myself up. At least take a shower. You know, I take something I get ready. The same thing, you want Mashiach to come. Well, it depends on us. And every Jew wants Mashiach to come. There's no doubt about it. But we're lazy and we're confused. So it says the Rebbe, stop being lazy and stop being confused. You have to, what you do, that's what you get. Measure for measure. If a Jew prepares himself, it has to be like what's going to happen when Mashiach comes. When Mashiach comes, there's going to be revelation of the creator and the creation. You'll feel that you're being created, but you'll feel why you're being created. So start to try to feel that now. Right? Like we say, fake it until you make it, until God makes it. All you days by means of this, a person becomes an inner vessel, <clears throat> vessel for this blessing from God. Right? When you do a commandment, you put on tefillin, think this is really coming from God. God really wants me to put on tefillin. Right? When you put on tzitzis, you think this is really coming from God. This is the garment of the king. You can look in a little bit in Kabbalah, Hasidic, what's you're drawing down, you're making God a king with the four corners that corresponds to the, the four different camps of the Jews, how they camped around the, 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 the tabernacle. In order to reach this level of Ashiva Shavtai Chavishon of Yotzai Chabad Chila, in the days of the Mashiach, you want to get all these things we're talking about, the judges and the advisors, you have to, it has to be in a, a Jew. Right now, simulate this. A, do you, when you do Torah and commandments and are occupied in Judaism, it has to be in such a way, Shavtai, namely, you have to do what God says because God says it without any questions. And simultaneously, you have to do it because I want to do it. I understand as much as possible. I'm happy to do it. I love the creator. You have to find something to love. It has to be real, not just like a, uh, an actor. Shehorah is a Torah that the, 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 the laws of the Torah will be accepted. The panemius is in the inside of the person. It's a tova, like a really good advice. The Indian Zeh, this will be done by means of the Jewish people but called Jot in every generation, Mitzayti, and they listen to the judges and the advisors of their generation. That the judges and the, and the, the judges and the policemen, like it says in this week's Torah portion, the, the judges and policemen, you should put in all of your gates. This is a commandment for all generation at every place, also outside of Israel, and all the times, also right now. <clears throat> And not only that, the judges we have today, they are just emissaries of the first judges that were back then in the time of Moses when they got the Torah. Like it says in our Torah portion, you should go to the judge in this week's Torah portion. I share be a mima in that are in those days. It says you have to go to the judge that are that is in your time. With the Rashta, and you should ask him, and he will tell you. What the law is, Vasita, and you should do Alpia Devar, whatever he tells you. That's on this week's Torah portion. Ada says, A shofet asher who is the judge? Every single generation has its judges, just like Samuel in his generation. He was like Moses in his generation. Shmuel in his generation was like Moses. When was Shmuel? Shmuel was like 400 years after Moses. Moses, 400, 450 years. Shlemos in a shofet. Now the Rebbe is going to get to us now. This idea of there being a judge or a wise man who kasher nosaf not only does this person give you advice and salvation, oh, shenosaf al shofet, in addition 
to the judge and the rabbi of your community or of all the Jews in his generation, and there also has to be uh, this person, whoever it is, he has to also has to be a advisor. A Selech Arav. The Rebbe said that everyone has to make for themselves an advisor. The Noten Lo Eitzos V'yir Shemayim will give you advice in serving God. And by means of this commandment, it's a commandment in the Torah. By means of the judges that are in your generation, and that he gives you the laws of the Torah and the advisors. And so this makes an inner vessel in order to receive a Shiva Shoftayin Kurishona that will actually receive it in the days of the Mashiach, a true absolute judge and true absolute advisors. A similar to this, now the Rebbe is going to bring up the idea of prophecy. And we're going to get this more tomorrow. This is especially the difference between the words of Torah and the words of prophecy. Huh? We have the, now the whole Torah is really the prophecy of Moses, but the, the, nevertheless, the prophecy of Moses is different than the words of the prophets that come afterwards. And the Rebbe is going to point out that in every generation there has to be prophets. And that what it says that prophecy ended after the first temple was finished, or after the, the beginning of the second temple, the men of the great assembly. So that means that it temporarily stopped. It says nifsach, it stopped. It didn't permanently stop. And the Rebbe is going to say, we see that the Baal Shem Tov and his pupils were definitely prophets. They told what was going to happen. Not only that, there were prophets everywhere. I, I, someone gave me a nice page over here about uh, the Ben Ishchai, and, and he had, there was a Rabbi Yehuda Pataya. There were other rabbis in the time, and they were prophets. I mean, they knew what was going on. They prophesied World War II. They knew. So it says that there's also prophets now. Torah is above understanding, and prophets are within understanding, and I think we're going to do this tomorrow. We'll get to this tomorrow, God willing. The Rebbe is now going to go into the idea of a prophet. And th this week's Torah portion, by the way, talks about a prophet and the necessity of bringing a prophet. And the Rebbe is going to say that he is a prophet. We'll see this. And his prophecies are 100%. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see this, God willing, tomorrow. Stay tuned in. And now we're going to learn the uh, Yom Yom.